Welcome to Paradise Botany. We are here for the opening of the 2023 NZIHL season. We are stoked. We hope you are stoked. I am Joel Rindelov. Joining me is Ian Wanamaker. And boy, have we got some excitement tonight. Wow, you certainly have brought it. Let's bring that excitement as uh, last night certainly was pretty exciting. And I'm not talking about that coronation. Perhaps Ooh. just wearing the regal tie just to demonstrate just a little bit of that royalty. That purple has oh. got to be represented. Yeah. But there's a bit of blue. So, you know, there was a lot of blue last night. But the Mako certainly got a lot to uh, be proud of from that last night's contest and looking to build on uh, at least getting that one goal and also their good, strong positional play and maybe converting some of those shot attempts that they had. Yeah, let's uh, take a look and watch some of those highlights from last night's action so Ian can fill it in on the rest. seconds ago yeah so yeah well hey right up in front of me. that's fantastic look at this quite good little yeah. battle going with Sestroni in number 42 one of the young fellas they actually have a couple of different uh, names on the back of their jersey so if there are a couple of mishaps tonight please we uh, we do apologize they pick it up Sestroni in the back end goes up to the point shot from Jones makes his way through oh what a save by Grace early what she's scrambling no stick of the ice goes off for a change takes the hit got it in got it in deep coach will be happy with that got to make the take the body to make a play sometime oh great pass here dixon streaking down the middle has a partial break luke simon great back check great back check held his nerve well there simon did as he uh, managed to stop dylan dixon streaking down for a breakaway of the first period hardly any whistles quite a free free flowing game might be home by dinner tonight wife will be pumped about that you know, it's her night out tonight, so she'll be uh, happy as. <laughs> She's got the kid. Oh, oh I do. Nice save. Oh, and a goal. Oh. That is how quick this game can change. Admirals get on the board here. He cleans up that rebound that uh, squirted out to him. Dixon gets that first shot, and that kind of just eluded Grace a little bit. She was already down. Then Taylor didn't have to do much to put that in the net. Open cage. Good step up there by the uh, defenseman, but that's left them exposed. Three on one shaping up here. What a great pass across. Grace slides all the way post to post to make that pad save. I remember when thinking 95s were young. Oh, giveaway here. Right to the guy that's imported from Canada. Comes in, breakaway shot. And oh, Grace makes the stop, but it trickles in with the momentum and speed of that play. So the Admirals score on the Mako giveaway here in the line. Riley Smith stick in the right spot. He just breaks away, takes a shot high, goes off the blocker, and then just, uh, just somehow squeaks the through arm. Grace underneath the arm. Adjusting here, coming in three. Oh, good poke check. Admiral sent it back out to neutral territory. Mako into the middle. Oh, Ooh, big nice hit man. by Kennedy. Uh, he steps up and he smokes another Mako player. They, they're just Ooh. making some silly mistakes they and are. handing the other team the oh, what uh, a move the by series. Oh, what a play oh. and a shot. Oh, saved by Croft. Oh, scramble in front. Best play. opportunity of the evening for the Mako. As we're banging on here about NHL, let's get to the <laughs> ends at IHL action. Streaking over the line, takes the hit, puts the puck towards the net here on the back end. Right in front, one time shot by 19, but Croft again. Good Great positioning save. to come and challenge it. Having a bit of a set to. Riley Smith dangling through a couple of players. Might be something to watch there tonight, old Luke Simon and Andy Hart. Grace is down, oh, shot, and that, what a save. whoa. Desperation save. That's definitely. It's, like I said, it's one of the fastest growing sports here in New Zealand, and it shows, like, the product on the ice is getting better and better every year, and uh, there are two clubs, the two Auckland-based clubs anyway. As Smith gets in, he shoots and save there. He tried to split through two defenders. And Simon up to Ben Steven. Ben passes up to Chamberlain. Draw pass here. Mako Marcus shot on scores! Hey. Number 28. Marcus McDonald. Marcus. Fun First fact goal of the, of the year. I think oh, Marcus is 15. Is he 15? Wow, 15 good talent here. Mako just have it in their own zone. Backhand up the middle. Ben Steven looking all the way up Neutralized, gets it to Chamberlain. Kind nice. of an awkward drop, gets it there. Quick snap of the wrist. 
just under the glove. Good placement there by Marcus McDonald. The odd time it does. Yeah, you get a small bounce and yeah. that goes in. Good first save and by Jaden. there Jayden. you are, there you have it. So good on you, Jaden, getting that first save. He's in the game. Not oh. tough. Nice Ooh, hustle. So Hart passes it over. Moses gets the backhand and a rebound. Oh, what a what? save by Grace Harrison. Strong split save. Wow. Now, when you say we, which team are you referring to? I guess I should. I should say most of my teams, the Montreal Canadiens, my favorite team. But oh, oh, is that a goal? Wow. We've heard a quick whistle, but that is in the net for the Admirals. They score. Sam Moses picks a corner short block, short side blocker on Grace. It was a nice one-time shot as well. As uh, I think it's Hardy pass across. He goes, takes on the man, gets around Simon, head up all the way, passes in front. Oh, no, he doesn't get. The Oklahoma, which is this kind of development team made up of players all under the age of 23 years old in that game. And here you go here, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he takes the shot. A get me a in. rebound. Dumps himself. But <laughs> just I mean, so that's that, one way that, to try and get it in. He was going to use his head instead of his stick to <laughs> shoot the puck. I, I mean, he plays so he injured. He's a, he's a tough guy. He's always yeah. injured, so but he continues to play. So you know if he's not playing, play. that he's yeah. definitely got something going. Ripped it in there. What a, what a shot by Max Vesper. Backhand top cheds. Ray where mom hides the cookies. On the power play. He, he is, is he? actually is he? one of the swarms oh, as well. Oh, swarm. Because on so his helmet, I, he's got Admiral yeah. stickers. Yeah, well, we better have a chat with him about that. No, that, is, that isn't. He's got something oh, else on there. something. To, excuse oh. me. I cannot see from up here in the birdcage. Well, what Difficult. we've noticed oh, is big great. hit on the hit. side. Chamberlain lays in this Estrone. Up to the cliche. This is quite good seeing Caleb make these saves. I might not have to play this year. I mean, my back hurts just standing here. <laughs> great Caleb's making save. another save. Oh, no. that What? That's I a mean. goal. He had the puck, and it was in behind him. Mason Kennedy sees it. Puts it in. I thought that whistle yeah, was I, I felt like I heard a whistle there. Corsi rating. Of the Mako game. Yeah, I got to check these guys' Corsi before they come to practice tomorrow or yeah, on Tuesday. Yeah, you're going to need a, their report card real quick. Nice moves here as Wimmer oh, comes around. And he pulls it in front, too. With a couple extras, but with Andy Hay down and the injury. Okay, you got some of your, yeah, some of your vets out for the. Oh, oh another squeaker. Seconds left. Last. And there you have it, team. That's that's going to do us for the game. Final score to the West Auckland Admirals. They have six. The Mako putting up a, a one spot. 26 shots on net, though. Like, you got to, with a bunch of kids out there, like, that's a gutsy effort by them. Taking hits, giving hits. Well, there you have it. A 6-1 victory last night. Crosstown in Avondale with the Admirals taking down the Mako. But the Mako did put up some fight in that game. You're not wrong there, Joel. It was pretty good to see. A great contest to watch. In fact, after the second period of play, things were pretty even. And the Mako had more shots on net than the Admirals and did control a good chunk of that half of the second period. And unfortunately there, right near the end, they got scored on. The goalies are making some saves, but it's like that puck has just got an eye for going in the net. It kind of went underneath. Caleb Price, unfortunately, and then that re resulted in one of two Ben Taylor's goals last night. So, and what hands by Max Vesper. He had a puck Ooh. on a string. Backhand upstairs on Grace. What a goal that was. Yeah, top cheddar backhand from in close. You got to like to see that if you're an Admirals fan. But if you're a Swarm fan, what are you going to be looking for in their first on ice action this season? Yeah, it's going to shake off all the rust, of course. You want to get. Uh, just get the habit of playing, get used to the guys you're playing with, try, try a few new combinations, simple stuff like passes to the tape, ch staying in your lanes. Like, you want to, like, that's what a coach should be looking for is all those little things in a game. And go out there and have some fun. Like, this is an exhibition game. Points aren't counted towards the standings, but it's counted for their development, and it really does mean a lot to these kids because they are fighting for spots on national-level rosters. And this is um, another reason why we have this set up here uh, in, across New Zealand. So... A lot of games for the Mako, and good luck to them. Yes, as you mentioned, the Mako, a developmental team here in the NZIHL, so those points are not up for grabs uh, for the table, but still a lot to play for for both sides, and the Mako coming back after that game last night, hopefully they can show that they still have that medal.
Oh, well, absolutely. This is a good test for that medal. It's like the second, second game in two days, so you'll see if they've recovered. They showed a lot of energy, a lot of pace, some real good physicality as well. So these guys are not shying away from any of that argy-bargy or that biff in the game. So it's good to see that they are really mature physically, but also willing to take it on and willing to challenge against some of these more experienced players. Like last night we chat chatted with Matt Kennedy, who was my co-host, and he mentioned how Gareth McLeish's beard is older than half of these guys <laughs> in the in this team, you know? Like he's start suiting up for his 19th season. Like it's incredible. 19. Yeah, he's played 242 games already, and this, so he's going to clock 250. Like, wow. Only Andrew Hay has made that many games, so it's just another accomplishment by these guys that have committed themselves to the development of ice hockey in New Zealand. And hopefully after these guys are finished up playing, that they do give back too, because this is an evident, this is the give back here right now. Absolutely, and you mentioned Andrew Hay, the grizzled veteran himself. He will be behind the bench for the Mako, hoping to impart some of that wisdom on these young lads. Yes, and he uh, was a part of the team with the Mako yesterday, and he had a, I think he had a bit of a shoulder injury, and he he's saw action in the first period and a bit of a precaution. He's going to go behind the bench, and Andy, good luck to you. It's good to see you behind the bench. Like he's certain someone that's uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's played, like you mentioned, a massive amount of games in this building for the for the swarm and the hive and also for new zealand he is i believe the most capped ice black of all time wow. so someone who is not only just giving service to an nzhl team but also to an international side and that hay family just what can you say they are they are forever linked to ice hockey in this country yeah i gotta say he does look pretty comfortable back there so Watch out. I'm sure there are a few benches in this league that wouldn't mind having his wisdom back there. As a former coach yourself, what uh, kind of advice would you have to someone stepping into that role? Oh, well, he, he's, a, he's a very smart individual, Andrew, and he knows the game very well. I think he'll have a, a lot of fun with it. He's a, he's a personable guy. He's a social guy, so he'll have good banter with the players. He's got a great communicate. He's a good communicator. Um, he's probably just, who knows, he might have a little bit of nerves, too. I imagine he might. So maybe just uh, whatever he did to settle himself for a game as a player, maybe he can apply that to himself as a coach and just enjoy the ride, like grow. There's a lot of support out there, a lot of people there to give you, like A.J. Spiller's on the bench, I believe. I think Justin Daigle might be playing in the game. He was on the bench last night. So he's suited up to play and get that great leadership and mentorship all the way through. So excellent stuff here for the Mako, and we'll see how they come out tonight. Yeah, absolutely. The Swarm, of course, looking to start things on the right foot. They had a nice little season last year. Didn't probably end the way that they had, had wanted, but you can see that they are ready to build on that this year, and this will be the first step. Yeah, you're right. Taking that next step is always key in any team's evolution. And as you see here, the teams just step out onto the ice. Um, donning, actually, those, those Swarm jerseys, they are relatively new coming into this NZIHL competition. They have traditionally had that bee-like logo, like uh, Sarnia Sting remnants of the OHL. I'm not sure if anyone out there would remember that team from major junior hockey in Ontario and Canada. And it looks like they're gonna be rocking with Connor Parr in goal for the Swarm. So another young goalkeeper that's been coming through those learn to play systems and he's just a young man just recently turned 21 and uh, celebrating a BHL championship with my team, the, the Castors, the Beavers. So he's uh, maybe bringing in some of the social league confidence at Old Hockey League, but this is the next level. It's, it's NZHL, different, different uh, sort of kettle of fish, really, if you will. And it looks on the other side, it will be Bar Bialik giving it a go in goal for the Mako. So two young youngsters squaring off here at the Hive. Yeah, so looking at the Swarm lineup, they've got uh, a few new imports coming in. A couple of Canadian fellas, one by the name of Kobe Rihor, and he is uh, paired up on defense with another gentleman called McDonald. I believe it's Ryan McDonald. Can't get any more Canadian there, can you, really, <laughs> with that surname? Um, and he's wearing number 36. 36. Kobe is wearing 34. So 36 and 34 will be a D pairing. Out on the ice, we got Remy Sandoy, the veteran for the Swarm, will be with Luke Simon getting some action. 
Yeah, he who played last night for the Mako, so he'll be uh, transferring allegiances and hoping to secure himself a spot on that Swarm lineup. And we are underway here at the Hive in Botany, Auckland for some NZ IHL action. And that'll be Chamberlain with the puck crossing into the zone. And it's played to the corner with Simon to chase. He backhands it to Vortinoff. And then played to the far side towards Sandoy. That's Quigley who takes a hit from Sandoy. Played up towards Hilt. And finally sent the length of the ice. This is going to be an icing, so our first whistle and a face-off back into the Swarm end. So number 89 for the Swarm, that's Sam Hill. He uh, felt some pressure on that wing just close to the blue line, maybe about four or five meters in, looking to center a pass up in the middle to his centerman. Doesn't hit the pass, doesn't make his, his target, and that went all the way down on this fresh sheet of ice, so that's why we've got an icing call. So here's Nash Hayward-Jones, tries to put it towards the net, but blocked by Mortenoff. And then scooped up and thrown into the zone by Dalmatow. And that's Sandoy again, skating it himself. He'll just throw it in and go off for a change. And Barr will be the first goaltender to be tested, and quite an easy one there as he holds on. Hey, first shot, first save. It's always good to get that first save uh, in the game. I imagine, Joel, as a former goaltender yourself, you always want to get into the game pretty early, feel the puck. Feel it, yes. You don't want it uh, to whiz past you. Um, I can tell you that firsthand. Not a great way to start things off, but uh, Barr, Barr's got a feel for the puck now, so let's see if he can continue that. Did you ever play uh, the, the gatekeeper role? Oh, mate, only only twice in my life. Once, twice. you know, uh, yeah, once as a youngster, as you know, everyone does their rounds, you know, it goes around. And then once was on my stag do, actually here at the Hive, and that was horrendous, horrendous. Exp well, fun for all of the people that were shooting on me. <laughs> As you mentioned, straight to the head. There's a shot attempt that's blocked as Hopkinson was looking to put one near the goal. But goalkeeping is a vital, vital component of any hockey team. And I got to hand it to them. Very brave. And now played behind the net and up the wall. at Sebastian Chamberlain. Trying to get that one towards Wimmer, but it's intercepted by Tuller. And the Swiss National just comes in offside. Look like uh, number five for the Swarm was over on that right side, just a little bit too eager. So face off just outside the blue line and... Oh, that's Kyle Marsh. He's another one of the new imports. Excuse me. No nameplates, so it's hard to recognize who these players are. And there's a hit right on, as that was Marshy throwing his body around. Marshy, of course, had some great success in your infamous BHL league a few years back, playing with the Cheese. Top Cheese, yeah, I think he might have got himself uh, his hands on that trophy, if I'm not mistaken. And now in the far corner, that's Regan battling with the puck. The smooth skating defenseman plays it over to Dag. And now back to Regan. Regan with a little space here. Puts it through, but he just misses high. Nice hard, quick shot, but looked like um, the goalkeeper, Connor Parr, was there for a little touch. Little deflection. Yeah, great position there. Now a puck coming through. Rebound attempt, and that just squirts wide, and the Mako are Good looking impressive. alive. Yeah, they're definitely swarming that net pretty, pretty hard. Nice play by zone. Chamberlain to pick the pocket of a swarm player. Centering feed there just deflected. Otherwise, that was more trouble in front. Mako on the front foot here, looking again to go back on the attack. And Luke Simon has it now. He'll just try to clear it off the wall towards Atwell, just in front of him. Hayward Jones gets it, but he's met by Vortinoff. And now here's Sandoy. Sandoy, a little two-on-one here with Atwell. Can't get the centering feet across, and the Mako do well to clear. So now Chamberlain pestering Sandoy. But Sando is able to use that nice size of his to protect the puck and get it up the wall. And finally played into the zone. That's Webb who threw it to the far corner. And now up the wall towards Steven. 
And then Zalmatai with a great interception here, puts one through, but just missed it wide. Good forecheck there by the Mako, getting some good pressure on the Swarm defenders. Yeah, they definitely look a little bit crisper early, maybe getting uh, shaking off some of that rust in last night's action. Yeah, Swarm are seeing this, like they're, maybe they're a bit stunned here with the speed and the pace that the Mako are currently running at. Nice play again by Dalmatow. Got through the feet of one defender, and Puck played up to the point. Now there's a shot towards the net, but again misses wide as that's been four shots clear of goal on as many opportunities for the Mako. So maybe something they can look to clean up. Yeah, that was something that we addressed yesterday with the shot attempts. Like attempting to hit the goal is one thing, but getting it on net is another. So something they'll have to try and uh, sharpen up on as we progress into this first period. And there's some Bastion Chamberlain trying to go end to end, but he's cut off. And here comes Thuler. Nice escape to buy some time. And it's Mawson with it. Trying to look for Puckett, but that's broken up again. Another turnover in the defensive zone for the Swarm. Now played up to Janssen. Janssen just ahead of him. He puts one through, but a shot and save by Bilya. And he was behind both of the Mako defenders. Yeah, they were caught, I don't know, just not skating hard enough backwards. He broke through one on none. Good save there, too, by Barr as Hopkinson was looking to go five hole. Regan dumped there. There's gonna be a penalty against the Swarm here, Joel. So they pulled the goaltender to try to get the extra attack. A great shot there one time. Wow. Koptev was wide open in front. And again, probably gonna be thinking twice about that. But let's take a look at this penalty. What's the breakout here as they um, send it up the wall? It looks like is that oh, here's Dalmatow. Dalmatow. Takes it, puts it through, but cannot. It's like he felt the, the pressure. Frame. Yeah, behind him, and he. I don't know if there was a stick left. He didn't look like he got it cleanly. The Mako going on the power play here, Joel. First one for the game. So that's Dag up top. He'll put one through, and a nice skate save made by Parr. Pocket with a good stick work, able to punch that one out. And so the Mako will start from center ice once again. Played down low towards Chamberlain. Tries to get it back, but intercepted nicely there by Puckett, and he'll play it down. So Dag, with plenty of time, will start behind his own goal. And that pass is just out of the reach of Steven, but no icing here as Sando is back to collect. Tried to play it up the wall, but Wemmer kept that in. Now to the far side. Steven got a skate on that, and it's back behind the net once again. Puck comes to Puckett and finally clears all the way down with just under a minute remaining on this power play for the Mako. Always difficult early in the season to work on some of your special teams play here, especially when you have a hodgepodge of a roster that maybe are not necessarily used to playing together. Yeah, it's just the nature of the game and also this Mako team as it's developing. So they're going to need to, you know, take it as it comes. Like they don't always get power play. Special teams is a huge part of the game. So puck possession becomes ever more important. They got to move that puck, get the passes on the tape. So Hayward Jones goes cross ice. He finds Steen. He'll leave it for Steven, and it's played in here as the penalty to March has expired. So we're back to five on five hockey. Quick wraparound attempt by, there by Zach Steven. Just nothing coming as Parr slid across to deny him that chance. And here come the swarm on side. Played to Tuller, but Hayward Jones is able to get a piece of that, and it's Mako the other way. That's Wimmer, he's had a long shift, so he's gonna take a break. And a full change here for the Mako with some fresh legs. And Atwell tried to throw that one in. His pass didn't go to you one, and he actually collected it himself, but Regan's able to intercept it. And but Hill was able to get that back for the swarm.
in the far corner, that's McDonald, the defenseman, trying to do chase. And now here come the Mako two on one. Centering feed here, just could not quite get a piece of it was Sebastian Steven. But now he's taken down in the corner, no call there. <laughs> he looked directly at the ref too. Is that gonna be a call? A little surprising that wasn't. Good two on one though by the Mako. Unfortunately, this the pass across wasn't in the wheelhouse. Oh, there's gonna be another penalty as Regan gets spilled. Kobe Rihor getting a little bit um, man watching, maybe? A little bit, he just left the puck and just took the man. Yeah, tough play there. So the Mako will be back on the power play here as it looks like he's just got his feet kind tripped a, up yeah, a little bit. It's kind of a clipping play, really. Like, clearly Regan put the puck past him, and it's a little bit of a lazy play. If you know the man's behind you or going to beat you, he just decided, okay, well, I'm going to try and take him down instead of having a breakaway against my goalie. And they might pay for it here. Short-handed. Well, that's the speed of Alex Regan putting pressure on this swarm. So often people, if you transition from a social adult hockey league to a NZIHL national competition, there's some poor habits that get developed that need to be shaken off pretty quickly when you get to this level. So Dag will head the power play here from his own end. Sporting some new wheels as well. I normally see uh, Justin wearing the old graph skates. He's got some new bowers now, so maybe he's getting a used to a new pair of skates. Perhaps a wedding gift. Hey, there you are, newly married. Congratulations, sir. And that one's played all the way down. And the Swarm will get four fresh sets of legs out there for their very effective PK unit here, 10 minutes into this opening period. And speaking of halfway, it's just halfway over the penalty to the Swarm player. So Mason will chip it up, and that is kept in nicely by Steven at the line. And let's see if the Mako can set anything up here. Instead, a giveaway, and again, cleared by the Swarm. Just having a bit of a hard time holding on to that puck, especially in the O-zone. Defensively, they've got it, like they've set up. This rink is a little bit longer. It is an extra 15 feet long. 200 feet by 100 feet is the Olympic size. They played yesterday at Avondale, a little smaller. Can you give me that in meters? Uh, I think it's 60 by 30 for the NHL size, I, someone will tell me if I'm wrong there, it could be 60 by 35, possibly by 40 if it's uh, 200 by 100. I think that's correct. Well, we'll have to check our mass in the intermission. Because right now we have the Mako coming into the zone. There's Dalmatow, puts one through and a save made, but I don't think Parr knew where it went. He was in the right position, so he made the positional save, but that puck almost got past him. Damatau has looked good so far for the Mako, showing off some great hands, but as of yet, hasn't quite been able to get that finish. Yeah, very talented young man, so it's good to see him get that break. Again, confidence is going to be something that's going to get developed. Oh, and here we go, another turnover. Oh, and he gets his feet taken out from under him. He was gone. And that's one of those penalties that probably not a bad one to take because he was all alone with nothing but him and the goaltender, Connor Parr, to decide where the puck was going to go. Yes, yeah, so Koptev, he does well here, gets the puck, gets the turnover, and then, oh, like right at the feet was Winston Lee, decided to hack him down, knowing that he had a clear path to the net. So Swarm already getting themselves into penalty trouble pretty early in this game. Yeah, they've definitely had some issues staying out of the box here recently, and, of course, those turnovers in their own zone will surely come back to haunt them eventually. Yeah, it was something from last season too, Joel, that the Swarm, it was part of their game that something they're going to have to tidy up a little bit. Maybe it's something that the coach can see as a work on. And he's got a nice shot there from the uh, high slot, number 52. Kyle McDonald. A lot of McDonald's all over the place. Yes. I'm loving it. <laughs> I bet you are. I bet you are. So the far side 
it'll be Regan with the puck for the Mako. And he's got plenty of space, so he takes it in and just rolls over Tuller. Going coast to coast here, then. Oh, right off the linesman. Off the glass and off the linesman. Ouch. That's going to leave a mark. And so now Day goes coast to coast. Puts one through, a shot right on. Rebound cleared away by Outwell. And that'll be Steven to retreat. He'll leave it for Dag. Now Dag across the red. He'll just throw it around. And it'll be Thuler to try to get that for the Swarm just past him. And then thrown right on and Parr will cover up and we will get a whistle with just 19 seconds remaining on this man advantage. I guess never a bad idea, Joel, to shoot the puck. But that was from pretty far away, like right at the edge of the blue line. And again, in these longer big zones at Botany, that's going to take a while to get to the net. And with no traffic in front, Connor Parr is going to see that and make a stop a lot more of the time. Here's a one-timer by Dag right through, but Parr's there with the glove from the ice to hold on. He made sure there was no rebound in play. Yeah, he's doing a lot better to control his rebounds as this game has progressed now into that second half of the first period. But good to see the Mako getting a lot of shots on. As the last game, you know, they did have some shot attempts, missing the net, turning that puck over. Face off one by Chamberlain right to Dag. He doesn't know well to leave it for Steven. And now the Mako trying to string a few passes together and get something set up. Nice play here as a Steven to Steven action, then cross ice to Dag, throws one through, but that hits the shin pad of Mawson. And now in the far corner, Chamberlain tries to play it to Aranjus. And now Dag has it, and he'll just play it right back down. Chamberlain does well to hold up Mawson. But two Swarm players come to help out. Unable to get it, though. And it's played up to the point again. Steven tries to kick it up. Instead, it's taken by Pillage. That is Sam Pillage, the former Admiral, out here in the white jersey for the Swarm. That's an interesting transition, going from uh, Crosstown rival to your former foe. Now, ally, I guess. Oh, shot. And then uh, looking for a deflection in front there. Quite clever. Pass over from um, Chamberlain. And here comes Puckett into the zone. Lost everything and took a stick with him. Now Hopkinson, he'll keep it in. Plays it down towards Janssen. Janssen will leave it for Puckett, but he can't control. Good opportunity there for the Swarm, but unable to really keep control of that bouncing puck. Centering feed here again. There's a shot attempt, but it hits Zach Steven as he was in great position there. Very good shot block. Good positional play here from the Mako. Keeping the swarm at bay. Now Quigley will play it up the wall. And into the zone of the Mako. Just throw it towards the net. And it's pocket for the swarm. He'll go over to Janssen. And it's kept in at the line. Mako doing some pretty decent forecheck here. It's not overly aggressive, but positionally they're pretty strong and they're kind of limiting the options that the Swarm have as the Swarm just pass the puck back to the Mako and go for a change. Quite dangerous here. Mako have numbers. And here's Regan with the puck. He's got Simon on his back. And unable to keep it at the line was Chamberlain. So the other way, it's Hill. Hill over to Sandoy. He'll play it back down low. And it's Vortinov trying to play it over towards Simon. Instead, it's to Atwell. And he'll play it down low. Again for Max Hill. One of the three Hill brothers. I think he is the youngest. I played in line with his brother, uh, Hey, but I'm not sure who's Simon going. with a oh, shot, shot to go! Atwell tips it in front, and the Swarm are on the board. Almost again, a little bit out of nothing here. Shot from the point. Atwell, good position in front on the backhand tip, too. That's hard to do. 
So Swarm do well to get the puck off the boards, win a, a board battle. Luke Simon throws it towards the net. Atwell reaches for it, deflects it down and into the goal. Out of the reach at Barbie Alec. one nothing Swarm. Well, things can happen quick here in the game of ice hockey. And as you see, just like that, the Swarmer on the board with a nice connection of Atwell from Luke Simon. That's only their fourth shot of the game, too, Joel. So that's that's going to be tough, too, as a shooting percentage stat. But they haven't generated an awful lot of offense besides that. They really have not. Most of the action has been here towards the goal of the Swarm, as we just saw a wraparound attempt there scoot wide as Kopdev was going around. Good hit there by Ben Steven. Great angle play to take his man Webb down. And they regain that puck. Sam Webb, got to say, like the new flow from him, he's put some mahi into that hairdo. <laughs> and here's Regan for the Mako. Centering feed finds Dag. Dag tried to play it down low, but instead it's broken up. And here's Tuller with a nice escape to buy some time. And now he'll just wait behind his own net. Trying to go long distance to Janssen, but Zach Steven got a stick on it. And now here comes Chamberlain. Had it stolen from him by Janssen, who goes around one man, but a nice back check there by Steen to steer that to safety. Yeah, again, Steen, quite a good positional player, helping out his D-man, noticing when he was in a bit of trouble. So Steven once again for the Mako. Now played over to Nash Hayward-Jones. And then back to Steven. Quite simple but effective breakout, Mako. And here's Wimmer who gets set down as he was trying to get past McDonald but was not having any of it. Yeah, loving that, I'm sure he was too. And there's Chamberlain throws one towards the net but Parr is there to glove it and he'll hold on with just a minute 23 remaining in this period. So the Mako sent it up, cross ice pass. Wimmer has it, tries to cut in through the middle. And McDonald says, no thanks, that is the Rock. Quick action replay, hit of the game. The Rock's rock hard rock of the game, sponsored by The Rock. And here's Hill for the Swarm now. Trying to make his own noise, but Barr holds on to that. And we will get a whistle again with 110 remaining in this opening period. The Mako have done well out shooting the Swarm 11 to five, but so far nothing to show for it. Yeah, it is. They are generating a lot more of their offense and chances, which is good to see. Centering feet here, here's Vortnoff. A nice no look. Backhand delivery from Atwell, but couldn't quite put it on goal. And it's Atwell once again, the goal scorer for the Swarm thus far. Now down low to Hill. Hill tries to spin off his man. And it looks like we are going to get a penalty on that hit as Hill took a bit of a precarious fall. And so it will be a trip on the Mako and the first power play for the Swarm. Yeah, as you see here, um, Atwell sets up in the corner, puts a saucer pass in behind the net to Hill. Hill has it, tries to change direction, gets hit from the back. I don't know if that's an accidental contact or just to just a play there off with a bit of a cross check. Nevertheless, 41.2 seconds remaining in the first, and the swarm on the power play. So that'll be Chamberlain who takes down Hill for the two-minute penalty, so let's see what the Swarm have as far as their power play. Very aggressive PK here by Regan to take down the big Mawson. Don't often see a defender attacking that deep on the penalty kill. Or, no, or taking down a, someone as <laughs> as big as Steven Mawson. Like, that is, he's a very strong man, and for Regan, gets on his horse here, puts pressure immediately on, on Mawson, gives him a shot with the hand, Gives him a little stick lift. It says, all right, I'm going to take you off this puck and throw you into the boards. How do you like them apples? Regan 
has definitely been showing a lot of energy here thus far. Probably more than anyone out on the ice as we get a whistle as the puck flies over the glass. Yeah, he's possibly put that work in the gym in the offseason. So you can see he's using that muscle to his advantage. Let's see how the Swarm respond. It's still their power play. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Big faceoff win here for the Swarm. Backhanded towards the net, but Bialik is able to steer that aside. And Mawson down low towards Janssen. Centering feed here. Oh, all alone was Hopkinson, and no goal is scored as the buzzer. The buzzer has gone. Sounds just as the Swarm were able to put one in the goal, but just a fraction too late. So not the sound the Swarm wanted. They had great numbers there, Joel. Great setup on the power play. The first pass did not connect. It actually missed the stick on that one time. And Thuler was there on the point, says, I'll come in and shoot this. Bialik wasn't in the net. He shoots it in, but that buzzer went, and the referee on the spot behind the goal line, as we see again here. But just some great passing with a little one-touch wide open in front. He whiffs on it. Hopkinson missed it. It actually, to his credit, was backed up by Thuler, so it went right to him. Unfortunately, that time expired on him, and we have a one nothing game still, not two. So after one, we have a one-goal advantage on that tuck by Atwell from Luke Simon. But the Mako, the Mako were the ones actually controlling most of that first period. And uh, you can see that on the shot count, but uh, they are behind on the scoreboard, unfortunately. It's a pretty good effort overall from the first period. They definitely showed that they played last night, whereas the Swarm took a while to adjust to this game, possibly the pace of the game and the physicality, like they've really been on that back foot. So getting that goal by Atwell, we're in the sea, demonstrating that leadership, really lifting his team. And you can see on this on this power play as it will continue into the second, see how they, um, they start the second period. So hang around, second period action coming your way shortly.
Kia ora koutou and welcome back to the Hive here in Botany, New Zealand, where we're seeing the Swarm take on the Mako in our exhibition match, kicking off our first weekend of NZ IHL ice hockey right here in Auckland. Yeah, kia ora I'm Tamaki Makoto in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We are really excited. I'm Ian Wanamaker alongside Joel Rindelab calling the uh, live stream broadcast for your viewing pleasure, and we do thank you for tuning in. As always, uh, it's very kind to get your viewing pleasure for this. Um, just a couple of quick updates. There was an injury last night uh, to one of the Mako players. Unfortunately, he went down and got hit, but uh, he's gonna make a full recovery. Just muscular, nothing uh, too major, so it's uh, fantastic good news for him. Yeah, scary, scary situation for Jackson Fontaine, but uh, we're hearing good news from that situation. Yeah, so uh, speedy recovery to him, and um, also I guess with uh, Andrew, he's got a bit of Andrew Hay, had a shoulder issue, Seems like he's going to be okay. Like we mentioned, he's on the bench, so he'll take it in his stride. But here tonight, some exciting ice hockey. The Swarm got badly outshot in that opening period, but we're able to slide one home thanks to Michael Atwell's fancy sit work. Yeah, he got a great deflection, good touch on the puck from the shot from Luke Simon from the point. It could be 2 nothing here, Joel, but that buzzer went. The Swarm were on a power play. They did put the puck in, but it was after the buzzer went, so it remains a one nothing hockey game. But please stay tuned. This second period is just about ready to kick off, and it's going to be another exciting one. Especially since we have the Swarm starting the second period, fresh ice on the power play, and hopefully trying to make up for that goal that did not count at the end of the first period there with Hopkinson wide open in front. Couldn't quite get the lumber on it. He took a big swing, no ding, and he uh, actually got some support from Thuler. The defenseman who pinched in was in good position on that uh, right-hand side. He's a left-hand shot, so in good position to do a one-time shot. Let's see if they start with that unit. They'll probably be wanting some retribution to get in on that scoreboard because they kind of got robbed of one real late in that first. They do have a minute 19 in that penalty, so we'll see how they set up on this fresh groomed ice sheet now question for you Joel just uh, for our viewers out there the machine that does the grooming of the ice now people from America call it a certain thing what do you call it I'm really curious the Zamboni okay great uh, named by Frank Zamboni from California um, Sometimes it has been referred to as the ice resurfacing machine. That's way too many syllables. Yeah, it is. But an invention that's been around for a long, I think it was in 1919, 1920s when he came up with that patent. A real kind of Kiwi ingenuity, innovative technology, like simple four-wheeled frame of a, of a vehicle and then ch put on this frame and a big bucket Room the ice. Have you ever driven the Zamboni? No, I haven't. Wow. It's one thing I'd definitely love to do. I've been on the back of a Zamboni, but never have driven one. Never driven a Zamboni. Revealing uh, all here today is Ian go. Wanamaker. Oh, I'm definitely not revealing all. That's just one side thing. Well, we're underway. Back to the power play for this Botany Swarm team. As Fortnite get over the line, and Hill, he goes down the side. Sometimes with this newly fresh groomed ice the wetness is still there see how that puck goes if it sticks or if it glides they're having a good chance moving around here Daigle gets it puts it on the back end doesn't clear Chamberlain good pressure on Sandoy he's away on a breakaway he streaks down Chamberlain by himself shoots save by Parr looking to go five hole Connor Parr gets the pad on it yeah that was a massive save right there that could have been a huge momentum swing and you like to see that from the youngster, able to close those legs up in the nick of time. Yeah, on the penalty kill too, so demonstrating such good awareness on the ice. Swarm has the puck here. Fortnot pressured by Chamberlain. Gives it to Atwell, Atwell stops up on the wall. Puts it down low for Fortnot. Fortnot goes in behind the net. A lot of top. experience here for the Swarm on this unit. Shot and blockered away. Nicely there by Bialik. But that is the penalty done. Oh, shot there from the point. Taken on the ankle by the looks of it. it was Atwell. He gets spilled. 
loses his stick in the process. Gingerly gets to his feet. He's an ice hockey player. He'll be all right. Oh, he shows like a big bowling hit there into his man. That's Nash Hayward Jones on the receiving end. Chamberlain one on three. That gets broken up. Vortnov can't quite get it to his man. And there's a turnover again in the defensive zone, but Vortinov just able to clean up the mess there. So uh, stop it just the uh, sideboard door gets popped open. On our replay here, the puck comes up and it just hits on the side. And the hit there against um, Koptev pops the door right open, which led to that whistle. So we are back to five on five action, the Swarm playing against the Auckland Mako development team. All players are aged 23 and under, with the exception of Justin Dagg, one of the experienced veterans of the league. Who, of course, has probably coached, coached most of these kids as they are going up through the Auckland Ice Hockey Association system, as Justin is a longtime coach in that program. Yeah, and a fantastic one. He's done a lot of wonderful and a lot of good for those, uh, those kids. And seeing them in action here has got to be very rewarding for him, too. Play broken up there by the Swarm. Hopkinson, lead pass to Johnson. That's deflected away. Thuler tries to get around Dalmatel. He can't do that. Dalmatel. And that's all the way down in the Mako zone. That's Alan Juice, another left-handed player. Currently going up against Puckett on that sideboard. Swarm with it, just in behind the goal. Battling with the referee, runs right into the ref, <laughs> kind of inadvertently. Scary centering feed there, but no one home for the swarm. Everett was too distracted by the stripes. <laughs> well, you got to be paying attention no matter what you're doing out there on the ice. Heads up is always beneficial for the officials, too. Swarm just electing to kind of leave the puck and give it back to the Mako. So they take it, send it up the ice, looking for Steen. That pass doesn't connect to him. And the Swarm send it down, and this is an icing call. So yeah. both bit of ping-ponging with passes not connecting. Yeah, a little bit of some sloppy puck work here. Something, of course, the Swarm are going to want to rectify before they start playing these games for points. You can tell it's a bit early in the season for them and definitely something coming off last year that they're going to want to clean up. Yeah, and that's something that you can easily work on in, in training, but this is, this is where you work on it. Like, these games are, again, super important and valuable that way because you don't want to be behind the eight ball, so to speak, when you are in full game points when they count mode. Because it's only a 16-game season, Joel. Not a lot of room for error. I mean, that's how many games are needed to win the Stanley Cup. you got to win 16, often not easily done. I'm not sure what fan of what team you cheer for, but um, my team's finally made it past the first round. So we have an obligatory shout-out to the Maple Leafs. Is that what's happening here? Oh, 100%. Like, they... Every Leaf fan out there will always say this is our year, and then when they lose, it's like, oh, yeah, next year, next year. And that's been going on since, what, 1967? So what is your prediction now that you have escaped the first round? <laughs> yeah, escape being a good word. Well, they've, they're, they've dug themselves a big hole right now against the Florida Panthers being down two um, and playing in Florida and the other team's barn. And Bobrovsky is, if he keeps playing the way he's playing and Kachuk is steamrolling through the Leafs, with no answer, they don't have a hope at winning that series at all. So what you're telling me, as Hill with a nice opportunity here, that the Leafs are not going to win the Cup again. I is think that, that's, is that, that what you're that's, me? that's pretty much fair to say, isn't it, Joel? But uh, you just got to love hockey, and that's what I do. I love, uh, love the game and love watching playoffs at this time of year. And these teams here in New Zealand are just starting their season, looking to get into playoff form, as they are here. Oh, and Vornov centers it to Atwell. He doesn't get a touch on it. And then again, puck giveaway broken up by the Mako. Yeah, Atwell doing a good job again, getting himself in good position to make a play. 
There's an opportunity here and a big save by Parr off the rebound. So he's looked pretty sharp on that end as well. Yeah, Dig uh, gets in on that left-hand side. And he unleashes a nice hard shot as it comes up the wall here. He settles it down. Alexa take the shot, looks up, shoots. Then that rebound is there. And on the backhand, taking a stab at it was Quigley. Parr making some good saves early. Yeah, good side-to-side -side movement there on Parr. Really needed it to cover up that open net. So like what you see so far from the youngster. Mawson battling down low against Ben Taylor. Good hit in the corner quickly, but Thuler. Thuler so strong bounced. on his skates. Very smooth as well. Manages to get that puck back. Even put the stick around his body there in mid skating stride to continue on with holding onto that puck. Definitely a veteran move. But the Mako continue on. They get that puck back. That's Nash Hayward Jones. Sends it up the boards to Domato. Couldn't do the nice toe drag. Mawson read it well. Took it off him. Thuler up the boards, up to Webb. With some newly silk silk flow that you mentioned earlier. I don't know if you can call it silky. He's got that flowing curly locks. Oh, that's a crunchy bunch of lettuce right there. It's <laughs> so. a big salad up there. That's for sure. Mako getting a shot on. Continuing with the pressure. They really have a pretty decent setup on the uh, Ozone forecheck when they don't have the puck. And they do well to get it back. As Hopkinson sends it back in. Players are still offside. Officials got the hand up. Namako put it back the other way. Swarm regrouping here. Winston Lee up to Marsh. Marsh streaking around Nash Hayward Jones. He receives a light bump. Taken there by Pillage. Pillage. Showing off those jets. Shot there by Rihor. Doesn't get all of it. Still gets towards the net. Pillage goes on the backhand. Looking a little bit like a power play here. Swarm showing good puck control. Now, now that I say that, it gets turned over. But they do well to get it back. Marsh up to the point. Shot there from McDonald. Nice hard low shot. And Bialak steers that right into the crowd, and someone may get a new souvenir, possibly ducking out of the way, avoiding that puck as that went up high into the crowd. Yeah, good stick work there by Barr in full control of that one and able to importantly put that over the glass and get a whistle because the puck was down at his end for a while. Yeah, Makos under some sustained pressure, the uh, last line that was out there, really doing well to go around the outside and maintain puck possession. Something the Swarm will look to build on here. That puck gets deflected off the Mako stick and out of play. So there will be another faceoff inside the zone. Atwell lines up against Chamberlain. One by Swarm temporarily, but the wingers for the Mako managed to get it first. Good burst of speed here. As Josh Dean gets around that outside. Gets hit there by um, Remy Sandoy. Simon up to Vortnov, backhands it up to, to Atwell in the center. Takes a wrist shot. Oh, looking top cheese, but goes over the net. Atwell gets it, gives it away though. Puts it down to Simon. Simon's forced to go back in his own zone. Over to Remy. Remy goes up to Sam Hill. He can't hold on to it. Norkin Andreus, and that's Atwell. He goes one on two. They kind of box him out there and do well. Mawson pinches from, from the point, keeps the puck in. Centering pass, batted out of the air with a glove by Sebastian. Yeah, good work by Barr there to get that stick in that passing lane, otherwise that could have been trouble. But quick skating Chamberlain again. Something that his, is one of his strengths is that skating speed. And he does well at high speed with the puck. Dig fights off a check. Pinches low. Hopkinson. Good quality defensive play that he has. Gets that puck away up to Vortnov. Vortnov, one on two. Centering to Hopkinson. Daigle's there to take it away from him. And they skate up hard up the ice. Three on one shaping up here. Danger for the swarm. Daigle 
Oh, loses the handle on it. Gets it in front. Shot saved by Barr. Puck loose. And it's flicked up to Janssen, all behind everyone. Manages to stay onside. He's in alone. Backhand, and he goes 5-0. Save Bialik. Great save there. Wow. Barr Bialik able to drag that leg underneath and keep it out. Mako right the other way, and they get taken down there as um, the Mako player gets hauled down. Good end, end, end action. action. Ben Steven, bit of an offensive hit there on Rihor, sending him down. Pass in front one time by Dalmatau. But Par, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, Par is up for the challenge, and he stops that one. Fantastic opportunity there for the Mako. They're starting to click a little bit in that offensive zone. And both teams making some changes here. Mako with the puck, sending it up ice, neutral zone. That's Aaron Juice on the forecheck. Good step up by Nash Hayward Jones. Players battle in front of the Mako bench. McDonald puts it into the middle. Hayward Jones takes it and just offside as the Mako make a change. Unfortunately, where they made the change is in the offensive zone blue line. As you see here, Captain Ben Steven. He keeps the puck in, lowers the hit on Rihor as he's struggling to maintain his balance. They get that puck back. Great pass to front of the net. One-time shot, but par. Yeah, that was all set up by Steven to break things up at the blue line, force that pressure down low, and Dalmata with a golden opportunity in front, but par shut the door. And it looks like Connor Parr is now, oh, excuse me, not Connor Parr, Bar Bialik is now being replaced. So in goes number 35, Gavin Croft, the youngster out of Canada, born in 2004, so he's only 19, making his, well, you know, he's his debut. He played last night as well, so he's getting some more action at this level. So Croft in for Bar, Bar Bialik, uh, he, he played very well especially on that last breakaway opportunity. He had some clean looks that he had to stand up to, and he, he did a nice job. Absolutely. Well, well done, Barr. It's a real good game that you've had. Uh, only one allowed on 11 shots, so that's a good save percentage as well as um, a really good start here for your NZIHL career. Quibbly absorbed a big hit there from Max Hill, able to stay up on the feet as well. Yeah, it was quite a physical game yesterday as we might get an icing as we do. Last night was a bit of a physical game in parts as any game has it, but that game definitely, you can notice it. It was definitely in the game and was, yeah, like you mentioned, make some noise. There was a lot of noise physically there. Maybe not as much, but it's more evident on this bigger ice surface here, eh, Joel? Oh, absolutely. Regan not only playing defense, but he's now centering and taking D zone faceoffs. So a bit of a positional change for him. Well, a good opportunity, I'd say, to work on a new skills for the talented youngster. You'll see him for the Admirals on the blue line, but hey, why not in this exhibition match, see what else he can bring to the table. Absolutely, and you got other guys that are gonna step in on that defensive side. So give them some time as well, because he does log an awful lot of minutes. He's just, a, he chews up a lot of time as he plays real long minutes and, and does really well when he's out on the ice. Two on two shaping up, Atwell tries to go through his man, but Aaron Juice is there, blocking it with his feet. And that's one of the Steven brothers, sends it up the ice, but it's intercepted by Thuler. Thuler wrist shot, and that's blocked. Doesn't get through cleanly, another block. Quite a good defensive shift there. Yeah, sometimes you might uh, try to test a, f a fresh goaltender early as the Mako just made that change, but still has yet to see a shot. And Mawson possibly looking to get that on the board. That first shot, he makes a hit against uh, Sebastian Steven. Janssen up to the point, that's Hopkinson. Quick snapshot, again, Mako in decent position to block anything cleanly getting through to the net. 
Puck it in behind the goal. Does a little bit of a reverse. Backhand up to Mawson. Mawson shoots. Save there by Croft. Nice toe save. That pass goes directly off the linesman. Bit of a break here for the Swarm. Nice move by Janssen. Tipsy doodle. Dangles. Shoots and save by Croft. As he was alone. Great save there by Croft. He was actually going to his left and had to stick out that right leg to make the save as we see a replay here. After the help from the stripes at the line, oh, whoop, Janssen takes it all away himself, but great right leg kick there to Staying keep that one it. out. Yeah, way to go, Gavin. That's a great read as the player's going against the grain, going from the left to the right, shooting back towards where he came from. Good reaction save. Mako not out of it yet. They are under the pump right now as that line with Pillage, Whitston, Lee, and March go to work. McDonald with the point shot. That's blocked. He puts it low. Daigle, he has it. Skates up. Doesn't get it out of the zone, though. McDonald does well to hold the line. Mako eventually do clear, but that puck goes up into the swarm bench for a whistle. Still one to nothing here, and Mako still out shooting the swarm had more opportunities as of late but again unable to slide one across that red line yeah it's just something's gonna have to break for them to get that extra little next step or that that break in the game at the moment but swarm are definitely pushing the envelope they're pushing back here a little bit keeping the mako hemmed in their own zone i'm saying that now the mako break it up and send it down so a bit of a seesaw teeter-totter battle between these two teams to start this NZIHL weekend. As Rihor, he gets harassed and he spins away from a check. Up to Pillage. Pillage can't get it out of the zone. Players battle, that's Rihor. He's got it poked away from him. Another giveaway in the neutral zone. March with a good back check there. Dag with it, hard on the puck. Can't quite keep it in as the Mako forced to retreat. Zach Steve, oh sorry, Ben Steven. Passes it right onto the tape of McDonald. That's Ryan McDonald up to Hill. And that's a glove pass. So uh, accidentally uh, closed his hand on that one and that's why they are blowing the whistle. A little are you able? Are you able to a little too, pass? A little too handsy. And, yeah, I was just wondering if you can hand pass in the neutral zone, even without putting your closed hand on the puck. It's kind of any time you gain an advantage, but it's certainly in your defensive zone. It's kind of frowned upon, but you should be able to do it. Again, any of those referee amateurs out there or current referees want to correct us or tell us what the ruling is on that one? Yeah, my understanding is strictly into the defensive zone where that play is acceptable. That's right. And that was a neutral zone, so we'll see. So Atwell chips it off, off the wall. Hill trying to chase that down. Swarm looking to skate well here into the zone, and that's Atwell. Goes on the forehand. Drop pass for Vortnog. Across. One-time shot. Oh, what, a what a save. Gavin goes across. Unreal. Welcome to the game, Gavin Croft. What a stab of the blocker on a wide open goal. This is the save of the day by far. For sure. Atwell drops it to Vornov. Pass across. Bullet. And a one-time shot by Hill. And Gavin gets across miraculously to make a save of the game. Wow. We. Wow. NZIHL is back. So he's definitely making his case for getting a starting position, playing, making saves like that. So score is 1-0. Quite a close contest, Joel. And we've played more than half the game. Pocket trying to get through to Vordanov. Gets it back. Shot. And another Ooh. good save by... Kevin Croft with the glove. Showing off that leather, great position, holds on. He's dialed in, he's coming in cold, but he is warmed up very quickly. 
Yeah, so Swarm generating a lot more shots here, and um, it's still led by the Mako with 18 and 15 registered for the Swarm. So not, oh, there's still quite a lot to hockey to play here, but I was going to say a relatively low shot count. I don't know, is that high at this point in the game? Kind of what you'd expect. I would say that uh, the Swarm definitely got a little more pep the second period, but watch out here for the Mako. Coming down two on two, shot and saved by Parr. Rebound, the puck is there, loose. Players are battling for the Mako, regain possession. That's Marcus McDonald, he puts it up to the point. And Sebastian Chamberlain throws it there. It's at Koptev, and Koptev has a shot, and it looked like it was covered for a moment by Parr. Referee blows a whistle to stop play. What did you see there, Joel? I just, in that moment in the game, uh, the whistle had gone. I didn't think that Parr had possession, like, fully of the puck. I would agree with that assessment. I believe the linesman may have lost sight of the puck momentarily. So that was why the whistle was blown. But from our vantage point, it looked like it was still bouncing around. But nonetheless, a lucky break for the Swarm. They will take it as they are clinging to this one goal lead. Big hit there by McDonald sending his man down. And Mako, oh, they have the puck cleared against them and that forces Sebastian to go back. Nicely done, but he goes right in front of his net, avoiding the forecheck of the swarm. Good speed here, gets lined up, takes the hit on by McDonald. McDonald is just a rock back there, isn't he? Ronald Rock. <laughs> Sponsored by the Rock. The Rock, yeah, exactly why I said it. <laughs> so the Mako. Oh, good pass up by Rihor. Up to March. Good defensive effort there by 41. That's Ben Steven. Still does well with the poke check. Swarm. On the four check, Pillage loses a glove. Takes it back up in the process. Play does go on. Here's Steen. He comes across. Shot. Doesn't get through. Rihor blocks it. Simon, dangerous in front, goes into his own corner. Off the boards, chips it out of play. Daigle, all the way up, finds his man. Pass across, that's blocked by Simon. Good defensive effort. They had a two-on-one there, Joel. Yeah, great play by Simon to break that up. Otherwise, Regan had a clean look at the goal. As the Swarm felt the pressure, sent the puck down for an icing. Two minutes, 19 left in the second period. The game is starting to flow a little bit more here, and there are some chances going at both ends. Yeah, the Swarm shaking off that rust from the first period, definitely looking a little bit more chipper, but again, haven't put anything in the net because of some fantastic goaltending, really. Yeah, I think Swarm, even traditionally over the years, has had difficulty scoring, like scoring more than the opposition, obviously, to win a game. But, yeah, you need to score to win. But I'm just, you know, concerned with the level of shots they take and not getting rewarded, even at this point in their early stages of the season. And credit to Gavin Croft with making miraculous saves. That one-time save was terrific. Oh, that was a beaut. Uh, well, down to Vordnov. Vordnov in the O-zone. Looking a little bit like a power play. He sends it up top to Simon. The Mako might be content to play a little bit more passive with that. Oh, good save there again. Atwell has a one-time shot. Yeah, had to be in good position to stand in front of that clapper at close range. Atwell gets it again, puts it in front. Vornov backhand, and it's puck is loose in front. Cleared by the Mako. But again, Croft no. called upon to make a save. Another great save on a one-timer in front. How many of these is he going to have to make? He has been absolutely onto it and very, very focused at the moment. So giving the Mako the benefit of the doubt here, keeping that one goal game as it is right now. Sam Hill has it in the corner, spins around, centering pass, doesn't get to his target. As the last minute of play, up to Regan. Regan, oh, breakaway here, splits through the D, shoots, and what a save by Parr off his shoulder. End to end as we go back and forth. Yeah, scary moment there for the Swarm. That's not the guy you want with the puck all alone, but Parr, what a save to just get a piece of that. So it is a goaltending duel here at the Hive at Botany in Auckland, New Zealand. 
NZHL action between the Oklahoma development team and the Botany Swarm. One of the original members, I guess, or founding teams of this league when it was only a four-team league. Some early success in those years, but have not won a title since 2011. Yes, there's uh, definitely a few years in between there. As a two-on-one shaping up here. Chamberlain over to Quigley. Quigley shoots, saved by Parr. Quigley gets it back, shot, and that's blocked in front. Just as the horn goes, wow. Just like last period, we had a great stoppage right near the end, a great play. As you see here, Quigley gets it. Great shot and saved by Parr. Rebounds there, looking to get it back and blocked as the period finishes up. Yeah, exciting way to finish it, similar to what we saw at the end of the first period with a lot of action on this side of the rink. And again, no goal to show for it as a golden opportunity there for the Mako. Back-to-back -back opportunities after that breakaway from Regan. So they are, they are not going away. They are coming out and coming back strong and hopefully we can see some more of that action in the third period. Oh, absolutely, Joel. It's been a very good contest to date. I mean, that scoreline does not reflect uh, the game intensity as well. It's one nothing, and it's a goaltending battle. So stick around for the third period action. We are just anticipating what's going to happen, so stay with us.
Hunter by Hokey by, and welcome back to the Hive here in Botany, Auckland, New Zealand. What have we seen so far? We have some action between the Mako and the Swarm. The Mako have looked good. They've got some opportunities, but the Swarm are sitting in front with that one goal lead. Yeah, Kirofano, so if you've just tuned into this broadcast, it, this Auckland Mako is like a development team made up of under 23 year old players. Um, and they are competing in this NZIHL competition. Not the points don't count to the regular season standings. However, they um, are using it for development and they're playing against the NZIHL Botany Swarm. One of the teams that compete for that Virgil Cup year to year. And boy, have we seen them compete tonight. Swarm maybe started off a little bit slower than they were expecting, but that quick goal by Atwell from Luke Simon really turned things around. They looked much stronger in that second frame, but oh my goodness, the goaltending also matched that intensity. Yeah, it has been very, very good to say the least. And um, Connor Parr is steadying the ship on the back end for the Swarm, and Gavin Croft is serving time for the third period splitting it with Barbialik. And we are underway here in the third as the Mako are the early possession as Taylor has it. Centering feed there is swept aside and now it's Max Hill with it. Try to find Vortnoff but that play is broken up and it's Atwell to come with Quigley on his back and it's played up to Dag. Dag loses possession and now Hill with a chance. Hill tried to get around two players unable to do it. Now here's Vortnoff Vortnoff with a shot, and he just misses wide. Cutting in, making a nice move, giving himself more net to shoot at, but put it wide. Now here's an opportunity. Straight back the other way, and Sandoy saw his man get around him. That's Marcus McDonald. Got hooked on the breakaway as that shot replay there of Vortnoff missing the net, and that allows the Mako to come back directly the other way. Yeah, check out the wheels here on McDonald, just splitting the D, forcing that penalty. Yeah, it gets the hands up, it gets the uh, stick on the hands there as he tries to make a shot. Lucky it wasn't a penalty shot. Do you know that there are five requirements for a penalty shot? Five requirements? Yes, five. I'd be hard pressed to name them all, but. Has to be in the attacking zone. Yep. All right. Have to have, uh, what, a step on the reasonable. Defender? Yeah, it's uh, reasonable control of the puck. Um, yeah, you got to have a step. You're on your own. The play has to be interfered with from behind. You have to have a clear path to the net. And there's one more. I have to remember what it is. Well, goal scoring situation, goal scoring Got situation. It. Those criteria were not met in that case. Mm. So it is just a two minute minor penalty, putting the Mako back on the power play where they haven't really had much to show for tonight. Now, again, it's an area that they're going to be improving on as they look to get their set up as oh, kind of a hit from the back there. Pocket sends his man down and, and the pocket sent down as well. So it'll be Dag from his own end. Unable to get around Winston Lee, so he'll try again. Instead, just pass it over to Steven. And now into the zone. So that's Puckett able to get it out, and we're back at center ice once again with just 30 seconds remaining on this power play for the Mako. So Ben Steven will have it. He'll leave it for Regan. Regan with some wheels now. Able to get around two Swarm players, but then loses Kontrak momentarily. And then thrown around the glass and all the way down. So that will do it for the power play opportunity for the Mako. Zero shots. No, they, they did a lot of skating around. Some good skating, good puck possession, but nothing generated at the net. Here's Regan goes hard into the wall with some speed, but it looks like he's okay. Does get up a little bit awkwardly, and he goes off to make a change. So it'll be Vortanov for the swarm. He'll leave it for Tuller. He's got some open room to work. Goes long pass here. 
All alone, the shot and a goal! The Swarm open up the lead. Sam Hill, great pass. Sorry, excuse me, Max Hill. I'm getting confused with one of his brothers. Nice pass up the middle by Thuler. Gets through by himself. Fake shot, toe drags it off the backhand, forehand, and in. What a move, Max. Great play there. Sending this game to 2-0 for the Swarm. And that's really what the Swarm needed to open this up a little bit and give them a little bit of breathing room on that nice finish by Hill. Credit Thuler, though, with that good on-ice awareness and good vision to put the puck all the way up to a streaking hill and hit him with that pass. He will be credited with a primary assist. He's back at it again. Shot from the point. Now here's Tuller again. Sidesteps at a stray twig. Finds Bortinov. He puts one through, and Atwell tried to get a piece of that one out of midair. Instead, it goes all the way down as the Swarm again are starting to threaten. But a turnover here again in the zone. And there's a backhand opportunity, but that steered just why as Dalmatow had a little bit of a crease. Good and response by the Mako. And now Dalmatow again. Played over to the near side. Turnover again, Dalmatow out in front, puck still loose, right in the crease, but then thrown out by Tuller. And now Vortinov with some wheels. Vortinov comes in all alone, way to save made. Tried to go five hole there and Croft makes another great save with big chances opening up this game. Yeah, big, big save there as Croft was able to close up the wickets with the speeding Vortinov pressing down to keep this at two goals. And now here's March trying to get into the zone with Regan on his back and he'll play it down low. Regan's the first one there. And it'll be towards the other end. Marsh, the first one there, trying to find Janssen. Janssen able to collect but can't get around Chamberlain. And it's cleared up but not out. And there's an opportunity <laughs> shot just wide. And Puck's still behind the net. Marsh trying to do some battle with it. Able to come away with it. And now to the far side. That one hit a defender in front. And the swarm here applying some major pressure before it's finally broken up by Regan. Now Regan into the zone. He loses control of the puck, but it's rescued by Ben Steven only momentarily as McDonald trying to make a play. And now it's Winston Lee in the zone. He gets it on the backhand, crashing towards the net. And instead will play it to the near side for the goal scorer, Max Hill. And Webb will just throw it around, and instead it comes out to Steen. And now Steen with some speed into the zone. That's knocked off his stick by Sandoy. But Sandoy lost the twig in the process as it snapped right at the handle. So he'll have to exit the ice surface where we have twigs all over the place. It's like a down forest. <laughs> Just a bit of a yard sale. And we've had quite a long set of play here without a whistle. So this is lots of action, continuous. So Steven at the line, able to keep it in and play it down low. Luke Simon is there, tries to play it up the wall towards Mawson, and finally chipped out to center ice. The race for the puck here is won by Caleb Chamberlain. And then he'll just backhand it towards center, and that gets through everyone. But no icing on the play here as Tuller collects. And now he plays it over to the captain, Atwell. Atwell into the zone, leaves it for Puckett. Puckett trying to find a centering feed here, but that's deflected by Steven as Janssen was looking back door. And now another opportunity here, but that's steered away by Croft. And now Janssen for the swarm. 
able to reverse tact and try to get a centering pass towards Puckett, but that's broken up. And once again, the Swarm will be forced to chase from their own end. The Swarm have uh, really, again, started to exert a little bit of the, I don't want to say dominance, but a bit of experience perhaps, as they've uh, dialed the shot back, the shot difference back now, and they are ahead with 25 to 22. So Zach Steven now, he'll go up the far wall. And that's put on a tip deflection by Janssen in front, but a great save by Croft, who was in perfect position and held on. Yeah, he's showing that really good position as we get a stoppage now at uh, 11 minutes, 46 seconds in the third period. The linesman will go and collect the errant sticks. And Remy Sandoy, not too pleased about having a broken stick and um, someone else as well. Those sticks are not cheap. They're, those a lot of value sitting out on the ice at the moment. And I don't know what a new stick costs. It upwards around $400, $450 now for one of these brand new composite sticks. Uh, that sounds painful. I've yeah, it's expensive mistakes or like breaking one of those and then you got to pay out of your pocket for one of them. These guys are amateurs, folks, and they got to pay for everything that they do or use. Well, some fresh, freshly paid for sticks out there trying to jostle for possession of the puck, and it's Regan who comes away with it. And he plays it up towards Taylor. Taylor into the zone. Mako here have numbers if they hurry. Instead, Taylor's forced around the far side into McDonald, who we know is sturdy as a tree and was unable to keep him from getting past. Yep, quite solid. Some might say rock solid the rock solid as a rock mcdonald rock mcdonald there it is sponsored by the rock so two goal lead here for the swarm with just ten and a half remaining here in the third period And it'll be Vortina for the Swarm. And Atwell centering feet here is broken up, and it's Chamberlain. He'll play it up towards Taylor. Tried to leave it for McDonald. That was just in front of him. And now centering feet here for Hill. Hill tried to leave it to Vortina, but that's broken up. And then Snowd will keep it in at the line. Backdoor here looking for Atwell. And the Swarm keep possession here as Regan has two Swarm members in front of him. And finally, the Maka are able to clear. They're looking a little bit tired here in their own zone as Regan steps up and tries to hit Hill. And bodies are starting to fly a little bit here at the Hive. Lots of movement that is happening here at the Hive, that's for sure. There's Good a save. shot right on, and Croft is able to steer that aside. Now Mawson throws his body around. Chamberlain's able to absorb that. And then played up towards Puckett. Now Puckett with his centering feet, trying to find Hopkinson. He's able to get a piece of it, but a big save there by Croft that hit him up and around the neck. And then a turnover at center ice, and it's Hopkinson again to chase. He'll have to get past Dag. Unable to do so, so here come the Mako out of the zone. Only momentary as Tuller with some fancy stick work gets it up towards Janssen. And now to Winston Lee. And then that's played over the glass into the netting, so we will finally get a whistle here with 8.36 remaining here in the third period. Swarm still up a deuce. Yeah, two-goal game. It is still um, very close as a contest. You could see a little bit of the Mako fatigue potentially creeping in, maybe with their, some of their decision-making, Aaron passes. But they are still playing pretty well defensively as Steen breaks out of the zone here. So Steen has it, puts it on, and a save made there. Par once again up to the challenge. No icing here as the puck dribbles all the way down the length of the ice. It's Steven to collect. He'll play that one up towards Wimmer. And now Dalmatow. Dalmatow into the zone. 
Still with the puck, puts it on and he hits the iron. Oh my, what an opportunity there for the Mako. Oh, lucky Connor Parr, because that puck hits the iron and goes right back into his body as Damatel takes on one, goes in the middle, gives himself some space here, wrist shot hard off that far post, right back into Parr, and he holds it. Great shooting there by Damatel, trying to get that first goal for the Mako. A goal could really swing the momentum of this game, as the Mako have had some opportunities, but... It has been mostly Swarm thus far in the third. So here's Atwell again for the Swarm. So that's taken off him by Regan. Now played up the ice towards Steven. Runs into Sandoy, but forgets the puck. There's a shot right on, and that is gloved again by Parr. So goaltending is on display here, as we mentioned at the end of the second. Connor Parr is doing very well with his rebound control as well. It's something that he's improved on massively since converting over to the ice and holding on to that puck after that shot there takes some time and some concentration, which he's showing very well right now. So Vortanov for the swarm, he'll go cross ice. That hits the stick of web and it's played by Zach Steven. Now to Nash Hayward Jones. And now up the ice, that's Regan. Regan trying to get something here as all five Swarm players had collapsed momentarily in front of the net, but unable to take advantage of it were the Mako. And now Luke Simon up to Vortanov. He's got some room to work, so he'll just skate it himself. Puts on the brakes at the blue line, but Regan steals it from him. And then Regan taken down, no call though as he stares directly at the ref and then gets off the ice. And now Chamberlain, he intercepts the pass at mid-ice. Plays it to Hayward Jones, but he can't control it. It goes to Hopkinson. Hopkinson in the zone. Trying to find Janssen, but Hayward Jones is able to keep it away from him only momentarily as it's played back down towards Janssen. Mako having some trouble breaking out here as the Swarm are putting in some pressure. So last six, minute of, six minutes of this third period, possibly the game here, Joel, with this 2-0 lead that the Swarm are sitting on. And there's a nice play by Chamberlain to scoop it up, and he's into the zone. Tries to throw one towards the net, but Mawson gets a stick on it, and we will get a whistle. Looks like a much needed whistle. Time for a line change. Guys, uh, again, we mentioned fatigue. I'm not sure if it's mental or physical, but it's definitely evident right now in the game. It's a little bit slower than the first two periods. In the last five minutes of this game, this is when you really need your leader to step up and um, kind of make some, make some statements here and, and really play as hard as they can. That's played out of the zone by Marsh. and It'll be Chamberlain. He goes cross ice towards Koptiv. And now Dalmatow with a nice play here, trying to get it towards the net. But he's ridden off the puck. And now Whiston Lee will hop in and try to get it towards Marsh, but it's kept in at the line. Now Koptiv doing battle. Puck still loose on the near wall. And finally played out. That's McDonald. He's taken down from behind. And we're going to get a tripping penalty here. And the Mako will once again go on the power play. Yeah, a bit sloppy defensively there by the Swarm. They get put under pressure. And Ryhorp takes his man down and behind the net. And then Damatau has the puck, puts his body to the back of his defender. And then the puck's there. So a bit of hard work there by the Mako to draw that penalty. And once again, back on the power play where they have struggled so far this evening. So they had a bit of practice. Hopefully that uh, with that practice, they have learned what they can do better. But that's not it. It's all the way back in their zone and they're gonna have to regroup again. So Steven will leave it for Dag. And with plenty of ice, he'll skate it himself. 
and gets around Atwell with some speed into the zone. And trying to get around Sandoy here. Leaves it alone, a shot right on, forcing a save from Parr. Still loose as the Mako trying to get some wood on it, but it's finally scooped up and cleared up the wall by Vortinov. Probably the best scoring chance out of all their power plays so far, led by Daigle, putting it in front to that high slot position. Just couldn't get enough muscle on it. Through to the net. So Steven has it now. Plays it up to Dalmatau. He's trying to make a move towards the goal. Good puck movement here by the Mako to get a shot right on. Rebound still loose. And finally cleared away by the Swarm as two opportunities there for the Mako. Yeah, having the well exper the good experience of uh, Day quarterbacking this power play really can steady that ship that the Mako need here and looking to claw back this goal deficit that they're, uh, they're down by. Yeah, we've seen some possession here as a play by Hopkinson to steal a puck, unable to get a shot off there. Some fancy penalty killing by him, but now he's caught back in the zone and the Mako are up the ice. Now Tuller is able to break that one up on the far side. Tries to get around Steen. Instead, he runs into a check from Steven. It's played up the wall, but kept in nicely. Now down low looking for Steen, but that bounces over his stick. Cleared up, but not out. And finally, Hopkinson's able to just ship it into the neutral zone. So here's Regan with some speed. As the Swarm are out of the box, who are back on five on five hockey with a lot of meat in that far corner, finally pushing that puck free. But we are back to five on five action and two minutes 44 in this third period. And that's an icing call against the Swarm as the player had come out of the penalty box. So here's Good that chance. opportunity and a one timer right on. Puck was free for, felt like ages but finally scooped away by the Swarm as a bit of a panic there. Yeah, just the man, the Mako guy was down on the ice and just couldn't get a quality scoring opportunity. Didn't get up quick enough to shoot the puck, so that was an opportunity wasted. There's a shot right on by Hayward Jones. Rebound once again cleared away by the Swarm. And now here's a turnover at neutral ice. This is Pillage trying to make a dangle. Centering feed for Whiston Lee gets through everyone. And now played up to mid ice. Pillage again with the puck. Tries to play it in low. And it's Whiston Lee. He finds March. March from a sharp angle hits the side of the net. Was thinking to try to go under the cookie shelf there, but couldn't make it happen. Well, it looks like the Mako are going to be penalized here. Bit of an elbow high up on the Swarm's head as they touch it, and it is gonna be, oh, it is a holding, I take that back. Neither, either way, there was some kind of contact. And, and you can it, see that holding arm on. getting around the defender there. It made an easy call for the ref. A little too handsy. Yeah, handsy, handsy. So that's two minutes and one second left in this period, possibly the game. And two minutes or less of that will be on a penalty kill for the Mako and a power play for the Botany Swarm. So here's Simon with control of the puck. He'll leave it for Vortinov. Now Simon again. And Vortinov puts one right on, but Goaltender saw that all the way, and once again, Croft will hold on. Yeah, when you see it, you can stop it. I guess that's the same MO for most goalies, but um, they are on the penalty kill. So Swarm will try and possibly put somebody in front. As we have a timeout being called by the Mako. Good time to take a timeout, actually, so they can... A.J. Spiller and Coach Hay can give his troops a little bit of instruction and... Also the same for the Swarm. Coach Van Dieven will, um, looks like he's in charge of the special teams as AJ gives his instructions over to the Mako. Yeah, interesting to see what they do here. Maybe try to get a little aggressive where they can actually pull the goalie and go five on five with the opportunity to ice it anytime they want. 
bit of a risk, but hey, what have you got Why to not? lose? Why not? you got nothing to lose, so it is a 2 nothing game. Not, not a lot left here in terms of time, so you might as well consider it. Maybe that's something that Mr. Spiller will try if they get possession of it. Well, you can see Dalmatau definitely playing high as if he was expecting a pass. Yeah, they are going to pull the goalie here, uh, Joel. So it's Day goes coast to coast here. And so we're five on five, but an open net for the Mako. And there's a turnover opportunity here for the Mako. Puck free and loose, and, and it goes score. in! The Mako score! McDonald, Marcus, Marcus McDonald. 2-1, their strategy pays off. Swarm have it, put it back behind the goal. And McDonald puts it in front, battling for it, and he just shoots it, goes in off the glove of par. 2-1. All, all set up by a bit of a turnover behind the net that the Mako popped right onto. And as you mentioned, the big risk pays off because now it's just a one-goal game. So last minute, seven seconds here. Stick around. Stay tuned to this. See how this one will finish. So remember, Swarm still on the power play. And we're going to have a bit of an issue here as the goaltender Croft was going towards the bench and had to retreat quickly as the Swarm had possession in the offensive zone. So they get possession. If they hold it and move up ice, they may pull the goaltender once again. So this is the softest forecheck I think I've ever seen on the power play. There's an opportunity right in front from Hopkinson and a big save by Croft. All alone there. And then Mawson throws one, but that actually hits Puckett. Played up to Tuller. He throws one through, but that once again is steered away by Croft. And now Janssen chucks one through. And Croft again having to make a play. Finally cleared up the wall towards Damatow, and here we go. Up to Dag. Dag trying to split the D, but takes a big hit from Mawson, as that was their opportunity. Here's Damatow in the closing seconds, and that will do it. The Botany Swarm escape with a victory 2-1 to one over the inspiring Mako. What a finish, Joel. Like, that really... You did not see that coming, and that is a fantastic result if you're a Mako fan in terms of development and giving a good effort all the way through playing a full 60-minute game. They certainly did that tonight. Absolutely. This is, of course, early in the season, so you like to see that fight from the youngsters, especially on the back end of this back-to-back -back weekend of ice hockey. But the Swarm do pull it off, getting a, a nice victory to start their NZIHL season. That's true, and you got to give credit too also to the goaltenders, both all three of them that played tonight, because Barbialek started for the Mako, giving up one only on 11 shots, and then um, Gavin Croft, pretty stellar, and he had, he had faced at least 25 shots coming in cold, possibly more actually, so Great result overall in terms of a development standpoint. Yes, the Swarm do win it on the scoreboard, but what a game to watch. Yeah, fantastic goaltending for both sides. I really do think that was the theme of the day. Keeping it at just a two-to-one game despite a hefty number of shots, uh, especially with Connor Parr stopping 26 of 27. That's exactly that's what you impressive. want to see. Yeah, that, that's great save percentage. And what good positioning as well. Like, very square to the shooter. He didn't make very many, if any, mistakes tonight. So, very promising for um, the Botany Swarm if he's going to be considered as one of the goaltenders in their season moving forward. You know that they've got some great goaltending with Grace Harrison. And also, uh, I'm not sure if Matt Kennedy's in the mix again this year to be playing. So, some good goaltending in that, uh, in the, in the, also with Connor Price, I believe he's up and coming. I don't know if sure if he's Swarm property or material, possibly is. So lots of good goaltenders coming through the development system here in Auckland. Yeah, a bit of a riches for the, the teams here in the NZIHL with a lot of young talent coming through. And exciting to see that 
Ice hockey is back here in New Zealand to kick off this 2023 season in the NZIHL. I'm Joel Rindelob. Joining me was Ian Wanamaker. Thank you for spending your time with us and watching some exciting ice hockey here at the Hive in Auckland, New Zealand. Kaki Tano.